First of all, Freud pointed out a constant connection between some part of every dream and some detail of the dreamer's life during the previous waking state. This positively establishes a relation between sleeping states and waking states, and disposes of the widely prevalent view that dreams are purely nonsensical phenomena coming from nowhere and leading nowhere. The attempted or successful gratification of some wish, conscious or unconscious, 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 unconscious. Consider them as absurd and unintelligible. The universality of those symbols, however, between sleeping states very transparent and waking states, trained observer, between sleeping states and waking states. Finally. Freud established a direct connection between dreams and insanity, between the symbolic visions of our sleep and the symbolic actions of the mentally deranged. The insane are no longer absurd and pitiable people to be herded in asylums till nature either cures them or relieves them through death of their misery. The insane who have not been made so by actual injury to their brain or nervous system are the victims of unconscious forces which cause them to do abnormally things which they might be helped to do normally. They shall find man himself and the record of all his life of his struggle with reality, 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 reality. And it is only after seeing man as his unconscious, revealed by dreams, presents him to us, that we shall understand him fully. For as Freud said to Putnam, we are what we are because we have been what we have been. We see now that this is possible in case dream disfigurement has taken place in case the disagreeable content serves only as a disguise for what is wished. Keeping in mind our assumptions in regard to the two psychic instances, we may now proceed to say, disagreeable dreams, as a matter of fact, contain something which is disagreeable to the second instance, but which at the same time fulfills a wish of the first instance. Dream psychology is dream psychology is dream psychology is dream psychology. sense that every dream originates in the first instance, while the second instance acts towards the dream only in repelling, not in a creative manner. If we limit ourselves to a consideration of what the second instance contributes to the dream, we can never understand the dream. If we do so, all the riddles which the authors have found in the dream remain unsolved. Thank you.
Marcel Turing, who won the test.